rated striker Rodney Jack. But as Trina Lake reports, one young fan is determined to see the Caribbean star stay at Plainmore. Rodney Jack illuminated the third division last season and he lit up Wembley in Friday's playoff final against Colchester. His greatest fan was there to watch, but Katie Hayward was horrified to hear that he might not be around next season and she'll do anything to keep him at Plainmore. At the moment she's getting a pound a week pocket money and, and obviously she spends it on what other little girls do, the sweets and things like that. Um, with Katie she wants to spend it to keep Rodney Jack at Plainmore. Katie is five years old today and is even prepared to give up her birthday money to the cause. That's if an alternative rescue plan doesn't work. I like to cuddle one day. Katie, a Torquay fan since she was three, lives close to Plainmore and the message to her idol is unmissable. But whether it'll do the trick is another matter. Well, if somebody came in with a, with a big offer, then, you know, you would expect uh, for Rodney to go. You know, a, a club like this can't afford to to lose out on money, um, you know, and if somebody did come in with an exceptionally big offer, then we would be silly to, to um, let, it, let it go. Hodges has hardly had time to get over the disappointment of the Wembley defeat. His own future is uncertain with no deal agreed for next season, and he's desperately trying to keep the current squad together. But with most of the players now out of contract and attracting interest from elsewhere, that could be difficult. Somerset's Andrew Cannon. This weekend, they were beaten 1-0 by Colchester. The goal coming from the penalty spot. It means there'll be plenty of local derbies next season with all three sides in the same league again. The faces said it all. Torquay came within a whisker of promotion on Friday and lost possibly the cruelest way, 1-0 from a dubious penalty. Early on in the first half, John Gittens was adjudged to have handled the ball. There didn't seem to be any intent, but the penalty was given. And David Gregory, with a little help from the post, had no trouble beating Matthew Gregg. Torquay battled hard, desperate to equalise, but couldn't find the back of the net. Now another season in the lowest division awaits. Players may have to be persuaded to stay. Well, possibly, but I haven't said that. I know the players want to stay at Torquay. They've enjoyed it. They, they've enjoyed this season. They've enjoyed their football. And, uh, and they've made it quite clear that they want to stay at Torquay United and give it another go next season. Um, you know, naturally, some of the players that have come in um, at the start of the season had a bit to prove, um, have done that and have done exceptionally well. And naturally, they want to go and get the best deal they possibly can and uh, look out to their futures. They may feel like they've failed, but there's no doubting that the goals have turned themselves around in one season. They were one of the least. They're now among the most successful in their division. And stay with we'll return to play more next season as Torquay look to level out their wage bill. The centre-back, who scored in Torquay's playoff semi-final win at Scarborough, was thought to be the highest-paid player at the club. But goalkeeper Ken Vasey, Andy Gurney, Gary Clayton, Chris Ledbetter and another playoff goal scorer, Andy McFarlane, have all signed one-year deals. Now, while most league by their Devon rivals, Torquay United, Torquay claim Argyle have made an illegal approach to their head coach, Kevin Hodges, after being refused permission to talk to him. Hodges is still under contract to play more until June the 30th and has been offered a new two-year deal. Well, I am annoyed to think how long I've been negotiating with uh, Kevin and um, I finally got everything tied up and the contract's ready for him to sign and, um, and this blows up in my face. So you can imagine, I'm a little bit annoyed. It's believed Argyle are keen to make a quick appointment to the home park hot seat after the sacking of Mick Jones as manager over the weekend. Meanwhile... ...tomorrow morning, or we'll have to look elsewhere. The girls are furious that Hodges has been approached by Plymouth Argyle to fill their vacant manager's role and have reported the Pilgrims to the Football League. Well, Spotlight's Hamish Marshall has been following events and joins us live from Plainmore. Hamish. Yes, good evening, Theresa. Mounting anger here at Torquay, it has to be said. First of all, there was that letter that was uh, filed off to the Football League today complaining about Plymouth Argyle's illegal approach to ask Kevin Hodges to certainly discuss taking on the vacant manager's job at Home Park. And then secondly, the ultimatum to Kevin Hodges, sign the new contract that you verbally agreed you would sign at the weekend by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, otherwise other things may have to happen. Well, the man who made the ultimatum was the chairman, Mervyn Benny. He's with me now. Good evening, Mr Benny. Isn't that a bit drastic? Well, not really. Um, though it sounds a little bit grassy, it's not because Kevin came in to me just before lunchtime, uh, told me that he would not sign a contract that we had and everything in a contract was what he wanted. 
Uh, then he told me he was taking the under his staff with him if, if Dan McCauley would have him. And uh, that would have left me with nobody at all. So immediately I said, well, you sign a contract by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning or I've got to look for other steps. Shouldn't you really have signed him up before now? Um, perhaps we should have, but when you get people going on holiday, like the um, manager when I, or head coach went on holiday, the uh, owner of the club went on holiday, the contract was all tied up except the little thing on the end, which was he wanted money towards a car. I've been trying for the last fortnight for a sponsored car. I think I've succeeded, but on Saturday night, when the owner come back, I said I'd rather give him the money, get it settled, and get the contract signed. Now, I know you would like Kevin Hodges to stay. Is your gut feeling that he will still be here by tomorrow night? I'd love to think so. I mean, he, we got nothing against Kevin whatsoever. He's a, he's a wonderful chap, and he's done a marvellous job since he's been here. And uh, nothing would give me more pleasure if he comes in 9 o'clock tomorrow and signs that contract. <laughs> well, we shall wait and see. 9 o'clock tomorrow morning is the time. Also tomorrow, Plymouth Argyle tell me that they're hoping to reveal the name of their new manager. Watch this space. Back to the studio. Oh, well, I wonder what might happen there. Thank and I feel I've tarnished that, and it, it is my fault, you know. But in the end, it is... Uh, bloodthirsty game and we've really got to look after our own interests and uh, we just felt that these two were the team that we wanted and we had to go for them. Today's appointment is likely to be warmly welcomed by football fans here in Plymouth but the manner of it seems certain to leave a sour taste in the mouths of their counterparts in Torquay. Martin Dean at Home Park for West Country Live. Training staff at the Royal Marines base at Limston. Of course another question. The signs were certainly pretty positive when the pair breezed into Home Park this afternoon, just hours after turning down the offer of a new contract with Torquay United. And they're under no illusions about the task ahead. With any club, their, their main aim at the start of the season is promotion. Uh, and we're no different. We want promotion this year. Um, it is a tall order. We've got some hard work to do. But we feel with the players we've got and the ones that we want to bring in, then it's an achievable aim. And after all the takeover talk, the new appointments coupled with the impending arrival of Tommy Tynan as commercial manager seem to indicate renewed commitment to the club from chairman Dan McCauley. Well, I'd like to be here long term, but it depends how I get over this hurdle. I hope this new management team I've put in place will ease my load. Uh, certainly the Tommy Tynan uh, introduction of Tommy should help the club from there on. Hopefully our season ticket sales will go up and we can go forward together, all of us. Well, I'm delighted to say that I've been joined by Plymouth Argyle's new manager, Kevin Hodges. Now, Kevin, was it actually a difficult decision to make to come here to Home Park? Well, again, you know, I, I had uh, mixed emotions because, uh, you know, we had a gr great season last year. And, um, you know, I'm, I think very highly of the players down there. And, uh, but having said that, when an opportunity like Plymouth Argyle, come, Argyle comes along, then I think I would have regretted it if I hadn't taken the opportunity. Plymouth, I guess, is where the heart is for you, isn't it? Yes, I, I had 15 and a half great years here as a player and uh, I had a nice rapport with the supporters and, uh, and I had some very happy memories here and, you know, to get this opportunity to come back and try and get the good times back again, um, it, hopefully it'll give me a great pleasure. A lot of people will see this as stepping into the lion's den. Plymouth have had their problems certainly in recent seasons. I mean, how do you view the challenge here? Well, people were saying the same thing to me when I, when I took the Torquay job on. And, um, you know, fortunately, we managed to turn it around. And I'm It's left his club in crisis. This is um, how the Plymouth chairman works. I understand that he did give an apology this morning. Um, I don't want that apology. If he wants to give me an apology, this is going to cost me money. Tell him to send me a cheque for 20000 and that would get his apology through. Hodges and McCall were very popular with the Torquay United supporters. The fans appreciated the fact that they'd taken the club from near Football League extinction to the Wembley playoffs. But they know their club is again at another crossroads. When you consider the last time that uh, Kevin and Steve were in charge was at Wembley, and here we are, a couple of weeks away from the players coming back and without a manager and a coach, we will miss them. The, the actual supporters are very, very disappointed. There's no doubt that Kevin Hodges and Steve McCall leave Torquay in better shape than they found it. But that doesn't cover the anger at the manner of their departure. Torquay have complained to the league, but it'll make little difference. The club knows it should have agreed terms with the pair months ago. Torquay now face a race against time. The first pre-season friendlies are in three weeks. 
Well, earlier I spoke to Kevin Hodges. I asked how difficult the decision had been to leave Torquay so suddenly. Well, it was very difficult. You know, it was. Uh, we've had a good season at Torquay last year. Um, I've left a lot of good players, and uh, the supporters have absolutely been fantastic over the last two years that I've been in charge, and uh, they've really got behind me. So it was a difficult uh, decision. And uh, but having said that, when when Plymouth Argyle. Um, came about it uh, you know I, I had to take it it was a, a great opportunity for me um, it's a big club and um, full of ambition and um, that's what I want now Torquay are clearly very bitter we're hearing the phrase left in the lurch those players who've backed you do you not feel guilty about uh, leaving them in this way so suddenly well obviously I'm, I'm disappointed for the players as I've already said and uh, you know and I, I've actually spoken to them this morning explaining what's happened and, uh, but I'm ambitious, and uh, as is Steve McCall, who's come along with me, uh, we want success. And uh, Plymouth Argyle are a very big club. I spent 15 and a half years here as a player, and uh, I had a very good rapport with their supporters here also. So, um, you know, it was a big decision, um, but I feel that it is the right decision. Now, Argyle don't have a very good track record of hanging on to their managers for very long. Doesn't that worry you? Um, no, not really, because I was in a similar sort of situation when I took the um, Torquay United job. There was lots of speculation about Mike Bateson, and, but I had no problems with Mike, uh, nor uh, Mr. Benny, the chairman. Uh, my working relationship with, with the staff at Torquay United was very, very good. And we have actually left on good terms, so um, that was a big plus. Now I've got uh, a big job and a big task in hand at uh, Plymouth Argyle Football Club, and uh, hopefully restore it to being a happy club again. Kevin Hodges, thank you. And you can keep up to date with events at Torquay and Plymouth Argyle and all the other sports news on your BBC local radio station or on CFAX, that's page 390. Police across the South West are hunting two men who abducted a woman... Mo to them, as I'll say to everybody else, they will be um, advertised, though you don't really have to because I've got letters coming in now and when we decide that we've got enough letters in, we'll decide. Well, Torquay expect to make a decision before the end of next week. The new man will have just days to settle in before the start of pre-season training.